meditation. The mind. When I'm in peace, the world is in peace. World peace begins with inner peace. Human beings consist of body and mind. The mind is a form of energy which controls and sends signals to the brain, enabling us to think, speak, and act in either good or bad fashion. The function of the mind is to see, to remember, to think, and to know. We must not confuse the mind with the brain. They are two different entities. The brain has a solid physical form of flesh and blood and is located inside the skull. Although not visible to the human eye, the mind also has a form, but an intangible one, much like electricity or magnetic energy. The mind is the origin of all actions, good or bad. It is the quality of the mind or the lack thereof that makes us good or bad. We need to nurture and control the mind so it can't control us. In its natural state, when the mind is completely still, the mind is pure and perfect, free of any mental contaminants known as defilements. It is in this state that the mind functions at its maximum potential. This is the state that all of us should want to achieve. But the mind is always restless and never still. It jumps quickly from one thought to another. A mind that is restless is like stirred water sullied by impurities, losing its clear seeing quality. Mental impurities cloud our mind like dirt clouds water. It is hard to see with a clouded mind. Meditation is a process that stabilizes and purifies the mind, restoring it to its natural state of clarity. Hi, everybody. You hear me well? Okay. Today, the, the, the topic today is, is meditation too difficult to achieve? It sounds very simple. But there is something that I like to uh, present today. Okay start over again. Okay, the, the topic today is, is meditation too difficult to achieve? My name is Prachayanun Kitjananto. First of all, we talk about the problem of meditation practice. In practicing meditation, we have two problems, two basic problems. One is the process of meditation practice is quite similar to going to sleep. We have been trained that when we try to make ourselves comfortable, 
still our mind stop thinking when we reach one step when we reach a certain point then we ready to go to sleep because we have been trained that way the other problem is the distraction created by the five. We have uh, many kind of defilements that try to try to uh, create the distraction to bring us to somewhere else instead of stealing the mind. That's the two problems that we're talking about today. <clears throat> the first one, the process is similar to going to sleep. You know, we have been trained since, since we were born that uh, when we are going to sleep, we try to make ourselves comfortable and relaxed all part of the body. And when we reach a certain point, we are familiar with that process that when we reach that point, we were falling asleep. If we leave them falling asleep, we are unconscious. And that uh, we go to deep sleep. If we get into deep sleep, we don't count as a meditation, practice meditation, because we, we are un unconscious. See, uh, we, uh, when we make ourselves comfortable, relax every part of the body. Um, we fall asleep. If we come back, try to come back from, from sleeping, be mindful and get out of sleeping, we will start all over again. Try to steal our mind by be comfortable, relaxed, falling asleep, unconscious. When, if we have something to think about, something worry, uh, we cannot sleep. We, we, we cannot sleep. But if we can stop thinking, then we can go to sleep. That, that's the way we, 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 you, we, we, the usual way to go to sleep. Another problem the distraction created by defilement. See, the, the defilement is evil thing, try to create evil thing by make us think. So it creates thoughts, a lot of thought, one thought to another thought.
See, we have a lot of things to think about. Our minds, the, the nature of our minds is always wondering. Travel, think of everything. So the way that defilement works is very easy way. That's very easy. Just make our thing, just create our thoughts and make our think about something. Think about the, most of them is stress, annoyance, uh, and worry about work, anxiety, something, the problem from uh, office, a uh, problem from the family. And make our thing one thought to another thought. But it's very important that our mind is very powerful, can think of 100 things at a time. One thought to another thought and think round and round around your thought, around your, your think of everything at the same time. So the defilement tried to make our thought, to create the thought, make our mind wandering all the time. Those thoughts that created by the defilement, it's three different groups. The first group is greed and lust. Greed, it's something that uh, beyond our need, what we want, that beyond our need is greed. Uh, we, we collect uh, things collect money, never enough. When we have this million, we need another million. The greed, lust. The second group is start by annoyance. Hatred, anger, revenge. Uh, the defilement try to create that by telling you that uh, you have the right to be angry. You have oh. the right. to be hatred to something. So, uh, but people never re realize that, uh, what do you get from your anger? Hatred, anger, revenge. What do you get from that? Only thing that when you recall that anger, it keep hurting yourself. Particularly the one who cannot forgive yourself. When you get angry with yourself, you hurt you and yourself twice.
the the group is delusion. Delusion like a prejudice, like a prejudice, like a envy, jealousy, ignorance. Delusion is the state of not using knowledge. Just believe what you uh, what, what you think is true, whether or not it's true or not. You know the jealous, being jealous, or being prejudiced. Prejudice of love, pre prejudice of like or dislike, prejudice of fear, and prejudice of being fools. So those come from the ignorance. And this is the way the defilement works. Keep sending problem, anxiety, suppress, worry all around you to make you worry, to make your mind wonder. The stepping stone to meditation. Uh, before get in to practice meditation, we should prepare ourselves doing something to eliminate those. Uh, those wandering mind, those thought, by give this kind of giving is to give without expect expecting anything in return. If you have some expectation of something in return, then that giving, that we, we don't call that giving, we call investment. When you give something to someone, you expect something in return next time. When you give a, a birthday gift to your friend, you expect the same birthday gift in return. So, if you have something in return, you, you maybe you're happy, but if you don't get, you get angry. You get angry. It's not create creating the happiness. So when you give something away, just keep it without expect anything in return. You will be happy. You what you get in return is happiness. But if you expect something in return, you will get worry, you will get annoyance, hatred in state. The next step is to forgive. When, uh, when you get angry, it's hard to forgive. So try to forgive. If you can forgive 
you can forget. If you cannot forgive, you cannot forget and you keep remembering that. Whenever you meet the, that guy that used to uh, hurt you, you get angry. It hurts yourself. Every time you recall the bad experience, it hurt yourself. The one who hurt you maybe have a night, good night's sleep, but when you recall that hurting, it hurt you, keep hurting you. So forgive to forget. Like uh, uh, you have bad file you, uh, in your computer and you keep, keep memorizing that, that file in your computer. When you have time, you recall that and it hurts. Just delete that file and there is no file to recall, to retrieve from your memory. Then you will be happy. Next step is to observe precept. Like it's kind of five precept is enough. Uh, not to do, not to kill, not to steal, not to to do the adultery, not to tell a lie. Things like that. Uh, will make your mind still easily. If you, if you cannot forgive, if you uh, tell a lie, then you will not be happy. When you practice meditation, when your mind still getting still, it pop up and bother, keep bothering. So observe precept is another step to, uh, another stepping stone to, to practicing meditation. Then when we practicing meditation, There, there won't be the uh, wandering mind. There won't be the bad experience or worry about future pop up to to disturb your your practicing meditation. So, so those two steps before practicing meditation is very very important. If we are in the kindergarten level, if we, the next step is university, it's hard because you need to step up to uh, a primary school and secondary school and then to, to to practice yourself, prepare yourself to go to the university. So all you have to do is to steal your mind, stop thinking, Still your mind, stop thinking. If you can do that, the rest will be done by itself. All we have to do, all, all we need is to, all we need is 
stealing the mind. To steal the mind is to stop thinking. Of course, you need those two steps to give and forgive, to observe precept, to steal, to make your stealing, still to make stealing the mind easier. Then when you try to steal your mind, try to stop thinking because the defilement try to create your thought all the time. If you follow your thought, then your mind wanders somewhere. We need our mind back to our body, to the center of the body. So the important weapon is to kill the thought stop thinking then your mind will get still get to stillness but when your mind getting still to a certain level the race will be done by itself we don't have to force them we just steal our mind, stop thinking and steal our mind. The race will be done by itself. This is what we call the art of doing nothing. The art of doing nothing. In preparing uh, for the meditation, Meditation, we in the category of mental development, but two step before meditation is generosity and moral conduct. Generosity, give and forgive. Moral con conduct is to observe precept. These two step is to prepare ourselves before we practice meditation. Before we practice meditation. Uh, in Pali, we call generosity, we call dana. Maro conduct, we call sila. And when we get those two ready to practice meditation in the mental development, we call bhavana. Uh, What we get from that, maybe we call, we may call virtue in worldly, or in Sanskrit, we call panja. Sanskrit and Pali call panja. Another word we call merits those things will create happiness and success happiness when we are happy it show up on your face your rise, your action. When it show the happiness will make people around you 
adore you, believe in what you do, and happy with what you do, who make you success in the end. For generosity, give giving with no expectation. Giving without expecting anything in return. And forgiving. Let's see uh, what's in there. Giving of material object. You know, the give something, some give to your friend, to your people around you. This is a material object. Giving of worldly knowledge. If you learn something, don't keep it for yourself. Don't be stingy with your knowledge. Just give it away. Give it to all people around you. Particularly if you are the chief of the department, working department. Teach your, your staff what you have learned. Don't think that they will, if they know equal as you, uh, at, at you, as you know, they will replace you. Don't think that way. Just share the, the knowledge to all people around you. They will love you. They will love you as not as the sheep of the head of the department, but you are as the teacher. Giving us spiritual knowledge. Whatever, whatever you learn from the monk, from the religion, good thing that you have learned just give away to people around you, your colleague, your customer, your family member, your parents, give it all. Share loving kindness and merit. See, when you practice uh, those generosity and, and observe precept and practice meditation, you earn merits. When you earn merits, the, the result of earning merits, you will have loving kindness, compassion, generosity, you have loving kindness, you have compassion. So when you have loving kindness and compassion, share that to all people around you. Give away the loving kindness. If you can help them, help them. This is very important for giving. Bad experience that you have, just forgive. If you cannot forgive, you cannot forget, you keep remembering that. When you have time, you recall that. 
when you recall that it hurts you. So forgive to forget, and you will be happy. Nothing to pop up and hurt you. Another thing is moral conduct. Observing, observing precept. Let's see what it is. Five precept. If all people all over the world have observing that five precept will make the world better. Number one, refraining from killing a living being. Refraining from killing any living being. Not to kill. Refraining from taking what does the owner not give. Ask for something if you want. Don't pick it up without giving from, from, from the owner. Refraining from committing sexual misconduct. Uh, all people love their family. Don't want anybody to, to commit their sexual misconduct with their family. So, refraining from telling lies. See, not to kill is kind of giving, giving their life. See, the, the relationship between giving and the observing precept refraining from killing any living being. Not to kill is giving their life. Refraining from taking what does the owner not give. Not to steal is kind of giving the trust from uh, from the things giving trust from them. Refraining from committing sexual misconduct is to give the warm family not to do the sexual misconduct. Refraining from telling lies is to give the trust to others. And the fifth one, refraining from taking any intoxicant or drugs Because when you're taking the intoxicant or drug, you get high. When you get high, you can do the, the misconduct, those four, those four precepts, you can you may kill 
uh, other, you may steal, you may do the sexual misconduct, you may telling lie. If you get high from uh, taking an intoxicant or drugs. So replace wandering and sleeping mind with an object and mantra. So when we practice meditation, uh, it eliminates those wandering mind, sleepy mind with an object and mantra. You may think of uh, the clear crystal ball as an object to eliminate all thought and concentrate and focus on the object. But when you you say you say something, but you uh, you say nothing, but uh, your mind still want to say something. Let them say the mantra. Samma alahang, samma alahang. When your mind getting still, you may not want any object or mantra. With your mind getting still, don't worry about your mantra or object because you get into a certain level of stillness and your mind will take care of it, will go, in, go to the place, the destiny, what you want by itself without forcing. See, at, at a certain level of stillness, the mind will automatically regain its power of wisdom. It regain its power of wisdom automatically. Don't force it. Don't worry about it. Just still your mind eliminate all thought when you reach that level it's automatic regain the power of, of wisdom it's not too easy but not too difficult to achieve right That's it for the day. Okay. I hope it's useful for you, for all of you. And it's time to raise the question. <laughs>